Live from Boston, Massachusetts, extracting the signal from the noise, it's The Cube, covering HP Big Data Conference 2015, brought to you by HP Software. Now your hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Okay, welcome back everyone. We're live here in Boston for HP's Big Data Conference here in The Cube. Our flagship program, we go out to the events and extract the signal noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of Silicon Day. I'm joined with Dave Vellante, founder of Wikibon.org, best research in the business and in tech. Our next guest is Sean Darty, director of digital and social media engagement at NASCAR. Super excited to have you on, uh, big fan. Love, love what you guys do. You guys are really creative. Obviously, have a great brand. Oh, and thanks. Great audience. So, welcome to thanks. the Cube. Thanks for having me. So, we love engagement. We talk about systems of engagement, systems of intelligence. We actually have the crowd chat out there. We are love social media because um, that's what people are doing. They're dialing in what their friends are doing. That's right. And they need something to talk about. So, that's why right. not NASCAR? That's, that's right. It's really popular. Well, it's really, you know, social has become such a, a key to the second screen experience. Like, people just don't watch TV anymore. They watch TV and talk about what they're watching with, um, with their friends or with people they only even know possibly online. So, uh, at NASCAR, we want to be part of that conversation, um, but we also want to keep tabs on trends around our race events and what people are saying specific to uh, the race broadcast. And so, um, we built a solution that enables us to, to get a better handle on the social conversation around our sport, um, which will enable us to be faster and more efficient at responding and answering fan questions. Uh, but then also, uh, something that will allow us to deliver insights back to our whole industry. So our, our racetracks, our teams, and our drivers, they can all uh, leverage and, and take advantage of this platform. You know, we've interviewed sailors, and we've interviewed NASCAR drivers on theCUBE, where they use big data for instrumentation, specifically cars, right? Because yeah. there's so much edge you can get if they have the data. Tire pressure, mm -hmm. wear and tear, all kinds of stats, and they run that in, in, in and it helps them. Now, when you look at you guys, are doing some cool stuff because now it's the fan experience. That's right. That's interesting, right? So talk about that. How do you guys manage the franchise and the fan experience and the role that digital's now playing? Yeah. I mean, digital was great, websites, you put up you know, email marketing, landing pages, promotional pages, but now it's so real time and That's you have right. so many awesome events. How are you guys transitioning to all that? Because it's super cool. So we we monitor uh, a lot of the real time trends and what what the what the fans are saying around our race event. And so you know what we we look at the overall picture. We're kind of we're taking in the entire conversation around the sport. So if somebody uses the word NASCAR or mentions a driver or a track or one of the race hashtags, we'll be able to to see those trends. Um, and so what we in our, our fan and media engagement center room. Uh, in Charlotte, North Carolina, we have uh, a system that is set up to just to see what's trending at any given moment. And so to, to help with that fan perspective, what we do is see what's trending and then possibly uh, deliver them additional social content that will help complement that race experience. So if it's a great save or a great pass uh, made by a driver, uh, we can cut that up and include that video highlight in our social feed uh, and give that additional experience to the and, fan. And, this, and the data is changing too, the formats, right? So you said in second screen, Facebook's got a lot of traffic lately on video. Yep. Highlights are great. Yep. Snapchat's booming. Vine, kind of quietly, but they're bigger they're than Snapchat. They're still there. They're, they're still bigger there. than Snapchat. Yep. That's a stat on that. So these are all new channels. How do you manage that? I mean, how big is the staff? I have a great I mean, team. Yeah. <laughs> Give us some color into what's happening there, because you're just doing it right. Yeah, well thank you. Um, our team is roughly split. Uh, I manage a team of about nine people, so it's yeah. um, uh, including me, four on the content side, content strategy, uh, four on the analytics side, and the live engagement side. Um, but they work very closely together to, to figure out what kind of content is working, what kind of content is not working, <laughs> Um, you know what is what is trending in real time during our, our race. What do what do fans want to talk about? You know, what is um, on the minds of our partners? You know, because our, our partners are, are such a key part of uh, our our industry and our ecosystem. Uh, we want to make sure that we're delivering value for them as well. So what's the tech behind this media center? Maybe talk about the, the, the piece parts, how you sure. bring it all together. Uh, it's a it's an HP solution. It is based on the the Haven platform. Uh, so we have uh, a bunch of disparate data sources from the social web and from online media that we take in. 
Um, we use Hadoop to uh, collect that and ingest it. Um, and then JBoss will uh, analyze and perform some, what we, call, what we call entity extraction. So we know if somebody says, for instance, I hope the 24 wins today, we know that they're talking about Jeff Gordon, even though they might not reference him by name. Yeah. Um, and then we use Vertica um, for data access searching. And then on, on top of that, we have uh, Tipco Spotfire as a BI tool, and then uh, Raven, which is our kind of query and search tool. And the visualization comes from? That's from uh, that's Tipco Spotfire? Spotfire, yeah. How was, how was that all sort of utilized? So you, you're, you, yourself and your team of eight others yeah. sort of you know, consume so we'll, that in real time? During our, during our live events, we'll usually have two people in the command center room, um, and it really starts with the overall conversation. So we can see, of all the people that are, or all the social buzz that's going on around NASCAR, um, when do spikes in top social moments occur over the course of the race? So, a specific event like the, the green flag, start engine command, uh, a save, a pass, uh, or a wreck on the racetrack, um, culminating in the checkered flag, all those specific events will drive an uptick in conversation, and then from there, we can drive in, we can dive in and get additional detail to what that sentiment and what that buzz is in the moment. And then what, what's the next step? I mean, the sort of the post event, is there a post event engagement strategy? Yeah, or so what's we, the objective there? We, we segment the, while, while the live event's going on, we do segment the data based on specific topics of interest. So um, we can look at fan sentiment around you know, broadcast. So what people are saying about uh, on air talent, uh, pre race segments. Um, you know, volume of commercials, even the on-screen graphics and the chirons people have opinions about. Uh, and we can package all that information up and, and show that to a broadcast partner like a Fox or an NBC. Um, and that's, that's the real-time fan sentiment about their specific broadcast. Um, we can do the same thing for tracks and help them manage that event experience. People tweeting photos from the track. Um, you know, people expressing um, Ex excitement or um, or maybe even issues with concessions, we can help track that and help the, our track partners manage that event experience as well. And then for drivers and teams, we can analyze um, fan sentiment around uh, you know both the, the race in real time, whether fans thought it was exciting or not exciting, um, or uh, fan sentiment around specific drivers and kind of what's, what's the brand around that driver. And you've been at this for not, not quite a dog year, but, but yeah, this is yeah. this will be year three of the platform. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so, so we launched in January 2013. So it's starting to get pretty mature. What, what can you tell us about sort of you know how are the metrics look? What are you tracking? Mm -hmm. You know, what's the business result? It's funny. It is it is getting mature, but there's still so much potential with the system, and then new new social <laughs> platforms are coming to the forefront. Blows like it everything seems like up every yeah. single year. Yeah, <laughs> it's like there's Snapchat and Meerkat and Periscope. Yeah, um, right. So it's a constantly evolving platform. Um, we've seen tremendous growth in the first three years uh, of our operation. It's been immensely valuable for us, um, not only to provide uh, analytics and research back to our industry, but our own internal business units who might be managing like a, a marketing campaign uh, or you know a local ad track activation. Um, just having something that allows us to to measure empirically, you know, what's going on in our industry is has been hugely valuable. We got a question from the crowd here. Um, hey, Furry, you ask about mobile and their experience there. Yeah. What's your experience with mobile? Obviously, mobile's hot. Yeah. Your fan base. Do you a web app? Do you go mobile app? Native. We, responsive. We have a, a suite. Um, our our NASCAR.com site is responsive. Um, it acts m more it like a news platform, like Monday through Thursday. Um, but Friday, Saturday, Sunday, once it's the cars day. are on the track, yeah. that's right. And yeah. we offer a live event experience where uh, fans can check out a live leaderboard with live commentary from our digital uh, editorial staff. Uh, we also offer a couple of mobile apps, um, uh, NASCAR Mobile for the phone and iPad, and then uh, NASCAR Race View for the iPad as well. Did you see Twitter had a deal with the NFL recently? Yes. Yeah, so yep. That's really interesting, you're starting to see that. Yep. The hashtags on TV, direct that's response right. vehicle opportunity. There. Yeah, and there's uh, they're doing a lot with um, with live video in stream as well, and so that's that's a huge area of interest for us, um, for both Twitter and Facebook because 
you know, we want to meet the fans where they are, yeah. and they, you know, where they where they spend more time, and that our, our social vehicles are uh, a way for us to to reach new fans that might not have considered NASCAR before. Are you seeing any patterns in terms of consumption of different media by demographics? I mean, I'm sure you do, but maybe can you share any of those with us? I mean, are millennials more more or less likely to be on Facebook or Twitter, or what do you see? It's a, it's a, it's a mix. Across the board? Yeah, I think, I think it is. Um, mm -hmm. You know, our, our fan base, like you know, most digital fan bases are, they tend to skew um, pretty young. Um, although, we see a lot of engagement with our, our older fans as well, particularly on Facebook. The hardcore fans? Yes, yeah, so that's, that's the challenge with, with digital, is appealing to the hardcore fan the ephemeral while trying the, to yeah. reach the new one at the same time. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, Twitter's in the news a lot, a lot of people are sort of criticizing, you know, Twitter, you know, financial analysts mm -hmm. are concerned about them, but still a, a massive platform. You know I'm bullish on Twitter. And I know you are bullish on Twitter, <laughs> that's why I'm asking. But, but and it's, we use it a lot because it's more real time. I'm wondering what you're seeing in terms of, where do you see the utility of the different platforms you know, from your perspective? Sure, uh, Twitter for us is, is real time. It is capturing the conversation of what is happening in that moment. And that moment can be a sporting event, a concert, um, a news event as well. Um, Facebook, we, we see a lot of interactivity and a lot of engagement, but uh, because of the way that the, the Facebook algorithm works, uh, it, it, the content typically has a longer shelf life, and so we will post less frequently on Facebook than we would on, on Twitter. Mm -hmm. um, but then there's other, other platforms that we're on as well, where we have a, a Vine where we're getting very creative with generating excitement leading into the race, showing clips from uh, practice or qualifying, uh, and Instagram as well is one of our fastest growing platforms in terms of, of user base, but that's where we you have that, that iconic imagery of the driver celebrating in victory lane, yes. um, the, the, the more lasting imagery. Yeah, photo journey, photo, That's exactly. photo kind of Millennials vibe. are exactly. all over Instagram, and yeah. obviously they're on Twitter too, Yeah, but you know, it makes sense what you're saying about Facebook's algorithm. Yeah. How know, do you sort of serve, I mean, I, this is kind of, this, we are kind of inside baseball now at this point with the media business kind of inside of it. You're your own media business. Vertical media is booming. Mm -hmm. We've seen NFL, MLB, they're all doing a great job. You guys have a distinct user audience, you know. That's addressable now, certainly measurable. Um, how do you you sell advertising and promotional. What's the new native, if any, whatever, the, whatever word they're calling? It. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, it's the words native advertising, but basically, it's just you have an audience, yep. and you have supporters, advertisers. We do I some do. promoted content now um, for for tune in, and just try and and reach you know kind of lookalike you know audience. Um, we're working with Twitter and Facebook. It's still pretty early stages, but you know we're, we're talking with them about getting more native video, which you know I think that the, uh, those sites are trying to monetize against that as well. And then we do we do monetize our, our digital platform as well. Yeah. What's your what would you how would you describe your biggest challenge? I mean, there's so many of them. You, met, you talked earlier before about just keeping up with the various mm -hmm. social platforms, but you know what's the the one big thing you wish you could have that you just don't have today that would change you know move the needle for your business. We have so many race events over the course of the year. We run from February to November. It's uh, one of the longest seasons in professional sports. Um, it's it's a, a cube season. ton of content. <laughs> yeah, there is no off season. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, after, after the championship race, we have the awards banquet and yeah. then the next year, and we're already getting ready for Daytona 500, which it, it's great. It's always exciting. Um, Really being able to to support and grow by having great content. You know, I think that that's the our, our next um, area of growth for us as a social team, which will help us grow as a fan base, help us reach new audience. You know, bringing on um, people that do you know graphics, like graphic design, graphic artists. You know, even animators. I've yeah. seen some of the best social the content. Storytelling. Yeah, exactly. Like social is is so much more. Or, these days, so much about storytelling um, and less about kind of that conventional marketing direct I response. Think there's enough utility in digital where it's going in my mind. The things you're talking on really show like digital is a utility, it's value, and the audiences understand what it is when they see it. So you can elegantly have a solution. Yeah. And the 49ers are doing this with Levi Stadium. They yeah. built a whole new in fan experience concept that they align with. So it's really not the old way of jamming messaging at people. It's really yeah. a new way of tell the story, provide value. And Do you know their story? 
It's pretty interesting. Not, they don't have people looking at the big giant screen. They get trying to get the second screen mm -hmm. experience, which sounds similar to what you were talking about at the top of this. Yeah, that's here. right, and and that's something that we're also looking to do as well. And the 49ers have done a great job uh, in their facility. Guys, they're, 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 yeah, I do follow the them six on social. Second yeah, that's right. Every yeah. Yeah. camera angle. Yeah, it's yeah. awesome. <laughs> it's really cool. It's really cool. They can't distribute outside of the venue because of Comcast. Right. <laughs> Hello, Snapchat. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we're trying to do that as well. You Authorized know? camera holders in those stands. <laughs> right. no disruptive technology. Well, it's, it's, it, it is. It is interesting, yeah, and we've done. We launched this year on Snapchat and partnered with them on some uh, on their live story, so that shows the fan perspective um, from you know for what it's like to be at a race, and that's that's something that you it's know great in the moment. It, program it is great it's in the moment. So it's, it's, it's awesome. It's, one of the clips was the, the cars going by and the fan was taking the video and his hat was literally blown off like as the cars just, you know, zoomed by and it's just the roar of the engine. Snapchat um, is completely lighting compelling. Bottle, stole my story. Yeah. And then yeah. they're putting in now, I was watching the uh, Outside Lands concert my daughter was at this weekend. I wasn't there, just seeing if she would pop up, she didn't, but you know, you're in the moment and the shaky camera is the production value. That's right, that's <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, right. It's like, whoa. Yeah. And, with and some little bit of curation, that's nice content. It is, it is, and uh, we hope to do more of that with them um, on the facility side. You know, you mentioned the, you know Levi Stadium. I think they've done a great job. You know, we're also trying to, or we are in the process of completely revamping um, our crown jewel, if you will, Daytona uh, International Speedway. It's a project called Daytona Rising. Yeah. Um, it's going to be ready for the for Daytona 500 next year, so where they have coming one. completely built up stands. Um, modern amenities, wider concourses, lounge areas, you know, things what, that, that you watch Yes. What's <laughs> the relationship that you guys have to the stadiums? The ownership, co-ownership? Um, um, well, NASCAR is a, is a, is a private entity. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then the, the stadium or the, the tracks, uh, the, the 29 that we race at for our national series, are roughly owned by two public companies, uh, and then there's there are so a few you can independent kind of deal in well. venue activity. Yeah, we work pretty closely, closely. with them, yeah. um, but the the NASCAR ecosystem is unique in that it's not like other professional sports leagues where the yeah. leagues collectively own the team. Like everybody's an independent entity, so the tracks are independent of the sanctioning body, and the drive the race teams are independent of the tracks. The drivers are even independent of the race teams, and they're all everybody's an independent contractor. So. You know, back to our original story with big data, you know, trying to develop a solution that meets everybody's needs has been an interesting process because yeah. a lot of times the, the goal the goals are different and, and their MLB, key metrics what, are different. Fifteen as well. years to pull off their yeah. move. I mean yeah. MLB advanced media unit started in two thousand and one really. That's right. Trying to get enrolling and you know they now they have HBO now. Yeah. <laughs> like they've done a they've well, done they a great job. a very political system franchise. Yeah. Can, yeah. I mean, it's kind of like independent uh, yeah. owners. Well, that's great stuff. We'd love, love to hear more. I mean, um, where are you located? I'm in Charlotte, North Carolina. Oh, great. Keep in touch. Absolutely. Thanks for Golf sharing country. your story in the queue. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> We're looking Thank forward you. to uh, collaborating and getting more information. Thanks so much. Sharing the NASCAR social media story, digital, the future of digital is really about a whole new set of experiences in the moment, real time diverse content elements, crowdsource, you name it, it's all happening. The sharing economy meets consumer-generated media meets everything. So it's the cue, bringing all that to you. We'll be right back after this short break.